right? And you have schedule, and uh, you have a lot of things going on in your life. And uh, there are a lot of things that are very uncertain as well. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, do you? Okay. And uh, we don't know uh, if there's going to be uh, some kind of uh, political change, maybe in Japan or maybe in the States or in Australia, okay? It could be different, and uh, some people might get sick tomorrow. You never know. And uh, some people might cry tomorrow, okay? How many of you guys have planned to cry? You plan to do it, okay? I don't think so, right? And uh, I don't think anybody has planned to cry. I'm going to I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna cry in the next, uh, you know, uh, uh, the next day around two o'clock. You know, I don't think anybody has, you know, planned something like that. And the reason why is because, you know, sorrow comes without, uh, without any expectancy, and a lot of things are uncertain in our lives and come through our lives. And there are many things that are uncertain, but there are things that are certain as well. There are two facts that are very certain today. doesn't matter if you live a happy life or a good life or uh, a, stress, a stressful life or maybe a joyful life. It doesn't matter. These two facts are shared with everybody in the world. Number one, certainty of our birth, our existence. Okay? That's very certain. Okay? It doesn't matter what's going on in your life right now. You are alive. Is that true? If I'm looking at you, you're alive. Okay, if you're not alive, please raise your hand. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you're alive, okay, you're with me right now, you're listening to me right now, you're looking at me right now, and I'm alive, okay? All right? I wouldn't be able to speak to you today if I'm not alive, okay? And uh, so it is very certain that everyone is born into this world, and that's why we're here. And we wake up every morning. Why? Because we have life. Okay. And uh, I used to think about this sometimes. And I would wake up in the middle of the night thinking, wow, I exist. Have you ever thought that before? Yeah? Is it just me? All right? And, uh, you know, I exist. You know, I'm thinking about something. I'm thinking about God. And, and I'm thinking about tomorrow. And I have something that uh, happened yesterday. I mean, it's just an interesting take to think about life that way. And then we go to work. Why are we able to go to work? Well, because we have this life. We're born. And we eat. I had lunch today. Why? Because I was alive. Okay? And we laugh. Okay? And we enjoy and, and, and a relationship. And we have friendship. We have family. And uh, we also have sorrow, like I mentioned before. And uh, all these things happen because of this one certainty, we are alive. We were born into this world, and we are walking in this world as living beings. Okay, so that's fact number one. We're alive. Number two, everyone shares this as well. We're going to die. Not many people want to think about it, but we will die one day. Okay. One day on this earth, we will stop existing. Our body will no longer wake up. We will not go to work. We will not eat. We will not laugh. We won't have sorrow. Okay? We won't cry. We won't have any relationships. We will no longer exist in this earth. And this truth was very clear to me when I was 10 years old. My father died when I was 10 years old. And I knew people died, but... When one of your immediate family dies, it becomes very personal, doesn't it? Okay? And I'm sure you have maybe your grandparents or maybe uh, even your sibling or maybe your relatives who have gone on in the sense that they passed away. They're not here anymore. So, you know, I think about my dad. I saw my dad who died, and he no longer moved. He no longer spoke. And he no longer responded, and he took his last breath on this earth. Okay, he died. Death came upon my father. And uh, I think what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, I don't think this is in the uh, slides here. I'll read for you. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, 
a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck that which is planted. Okay. So Bible saying there's time to be born and a time to die. And then also there is time to plant and time where you need to be, those things need to be plucked. And uh, my wife celebrated her birthday about, just kidding. <laughs> I know when your birthday is, March 11th, okay? So that's about three weeks ago, all right? And uh, we gave her some cake. We had some wonderful time. We also gave her flour, okay? And uh, this one flower lasted for very long. Okay, I don't know. What kind of flower was it, honey? It's a very big flower. And, uh, but anyways, we were surprised. The other flowers died off, but this one particular flower had a lot of leaves, and, and it just blossomed for like maybe for a good two, three weeks. And it's still in my house. But we expect it to die one day, right? Okay. As much as we enjoy this flower, it's going to die. It was planted one time, okay? It grew, it blossomed as a flower, but one day that plant will die. That's fact. It's certain, okay? So, those things are very certain. Number one, we have life. Number two, there is death. Now, as Christians, though, there is a third thing that is very certain for us, okay? Every one of us share number one and number two, but not every one of us share number three. What is that number three? Eternal life, okay? Eternal life is certain. It can be certain, okay? And many people do not know the answer to the question. Do you know if you will have eternal life? Now, someone could ask you and say, are you alive? And then your answer will be yes. yes. Okay? Good answer. Okay? Number two, now, are you going to die? Your answer will be yes. I will die one day. It's certain, isn't it? No question about those two questions. Everyone could answer them with a yes. Yes, I'm alive. Yes, I will die one day. But the next question, do you know if you will have eternal life? And many people could say, mm, I don't know. Not sure. There is no certainty. But I'd like to encourage you from the Bible that God wants you to be certain about eternal life, okay? And as we think about eternal life, can I give you eternal life? No, right? Josiah, can I give you eternal life? Now, I gave you life, okay? I married your mom, okay? I have five kids, right? All right, five children, okay? And I have something to do with that, right? <laughs> All right? And uh, I, I, we could bear children, okay? And there's life being born. But could I give my children eternal life? No, I can't give you that guarantee. Or I can't give them that guarantee. No way. Why? Because I am not an eternal being, right? I cannot give anything that I don't have, right? Okay? And uh, Brother Jason was teaching English for the last seven weeks here at IBC. Why? Because he knows English, right? Because he knows English, he's able to teach English. He's able to give instructions in how to speak English, okay? So we cannot claim eternal life, okay, until we acknowledge that there's somebody who can give us eternal life, okay? And that's very uh, logical as we think about how we live this life. You cannot give anything unless you have it, right? Okay? And everybody has this hope in thinking, I wish I can have eternal life. And that can be true if you believe in a person who could give you eternal life. 
As we think about this world and as we see this world, we can't find anybody physically that could give us eternal life. Isn't that true? Okay. Can President Biden give me eternal life in the United States? Can, you know, Prime Minister Saga, can he give us eternal life? No. Okay. We can't think of anybody who is in high position that can give us eternal life. And we know when we think about eternity, we think about deity. What does that mean? We think about God, someone who is greater than human beings. And that God exists today. We came from somewhere. Okay? We didn't just came, we didn't just come out, uh, you know, as an accident, okay? And uh, our lives had a purpose, and we had plans. We think about the future, and we also have this conscience in thinking, I wonder if there's a God. I wonder if there's a eternal being. And the reason is because there is one. There is one. And I believe the answer to this eternal life question can only be answered by our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why we have Easter. Jesus Christ rose again from the dead. Death had no power on him. And he is the living Savior, not just for a century, not just for a season, but for all eternity. And he promises us eternal life. Okay. That really makes a big difference between every other religious leader or anybody who taught about truth. Everybody talked about truth. A lot of people you know, taught about truth, but not everybody was able to say, I want to give you eternal life. And Jesus Christ is the only person who did that. And uh, the Bible says in John 10, I think we had this on the screen in Japanese as well. In verse 28, and I give them unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Now, does it sound like Jesus Christ has full authority? Yes, it does. Because he is the one who can give us eternal life. That's what he claims here in John 10, verse 28. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my Father's hand. And uh, as we think about this truth, we must acknowledge that Jesus Christ did not claim to be just a man, but he claimed to be God. And without him being God, he cannot give us eternal life. In Acts 2, verse 24, the Bible says here, Whom God has raised up, okay, this is also on the screen if, in Japanese, if you like to see it. In Acts 2, verse 24, In whom God had raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. I guess we don't have that, huh? All right, apologize for that. But as we think about that scripture, God says, okay, the Bible says that Jesus Christ could not be holden to be dead, to be in the grave. Why? Because he was not just a regular person. He was God himself in the flesh. And he rose again from the third day. And we thank God for that. So was it possible for Jesus Christ to remain dead? No, it was not possible. Because he rose again on the third day, not as a man, but as the Son of God who had deity. Revelation 1.18. I think this is on the screen. Apologize. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ says, I am alive for how long? Forevermore. And he has the keys of death and hell. Jesus Christ says, I have the keys of death and hell. What does that mean? Well, it means that he has authority over hell 
He has authority over death. Okay. So he's not just a regular person, is he? Okay. And uh, so he is alive forevermore. Okay. He is an eternal being. And he rose again from the dead, and he wants, us to, get, he wants to give us eternal life. John 11, verse 25. And it says here, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, believest thou this. Okay, so Jesus Christ is very clear in saying, I am the resurrection. Okay, I will die, but I will be risen again. I am the resurrection. And I will give you eternal life. If you believe me, I will give you eternal life. That's what Jesus said. Okay. And Jesus is asking this question even to us. Believest thou this? Do you believe this? Do you believe that I am the Son of God who can give you eternal life? And that's the question that everyone needs to answer. Will you believe in Jesus, or will you not believe in Jesus? God makes it very simple for us to make a choice. Okay? And God wants us to make sure that we have a chance to, whether to believe in Jesus or not believe in Jesus. And uh, I want to encourage you today, when I was 18 years old, I, cho I chose to believe in Jesus. Okay. And I thank God I did. And by God's promise, I have eternal life. Is it because I'm perfect? No. Is it because I have done so many good things? No. I wish I could do more. Okay. Is it because, you know, my heart is clean? No. Is it because my mind is so good? No. Is it because I have so much knowledge? No. It's because I believed in Jesus Christ. Because he is the only one that could give me eternal life. Not my parents, not a country or a politician, anybody. Only Jesus Christ could give me eternal life. And I chose to believe in him. Before, I had a struggle. And uh, I, I tried to not to believe in him and thinking that I already knew God. But that wasn't the case. I didn't know God. I didn't know who, real, who uh, the real God was until I realized that Jesus Christ is the only God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Only way to get to God is through Jesus Christ. And he gives us a wonderful, simple promise. I will give it to you if you just believe in me. Now, what do you need to believe about Jesus? Okay. It's more than just knowing him as a historical person, a person who was a teacher, a person who lived 2,000 years ago. No, it's more than that. You have to believe that Jesus Christ is God, the Son of God who came down, and that he died on the cross for your sins, and that he was buried, and he rose again the third day. Okay, let me explain this to you very clearly. In Romans 3, verse 10, it says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understand it. There is none that seek it after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that do it good. No, not one. So what is God saying? God is saying that there is nobody in this world who is perfect. Okay. Everybody has sinned. Everybody had a bad thought before. Everybody had lied sometime okay, or mistreated somebody. How many of you argue with somebody? Raise your hand. Okay, all right, if you're not raising your hand, I'd like to argue with you about that, all right? And, okay, everybody has some kind of a fight or argument with somebody. Why? Because of pride, right? Because of our ego, 
All right? So we know that no one is perfect. And I think all of us could agree. And that's what God is saying. Nobody is good. Nobody is perfect. In Ezekiel 18, it says in verse 4, Behold, all souls are mine as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinned, it shall die. Now, many people don't like to hear this truth, but this is the fact of the matter. Why do we die? Because we sin. Soul that sin it, it shall die. If you have sin any time in this life, you will die one day. That's why we have death. Okay? Everybody will die. Why? Because everyone's not perfect. Okay? Everybody needs to bear their own sin, and that sin, that, and that sin will lead to death. Okay? Now, in Revelation 28, 21, verse 8, okay, I'll quote this for you as well. But after we die, where does that person go? Okay, well, the Bible says there is another judgment. Revelation 21, verse 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liar shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Okay, our first death is our physical death. Okay, our body will no longer move. Why? Because we died physically. But there is a second death, the Bible says. That second death is a place called the lake of fire. Now, that doesn't sound very pleasant, does it? Okay. It's a place of torment and pain. And because of our sin, not only do we die physically, but we will die spiritually. We will die, and our soul will go to a place called the lake of fire. It's a terrible place, and it's for all eternity. All eternity. Not just for a brief time, not for, not for a thousand years, but forever and ever and ever. But here's the good news. Does God want us to go there? No, he doesn't want us to go there. Okay. We have chosen to sin against God. And by that choice, we die and we go to a place called hell the lake of fire. But God loves us so much, he said, I want to give you eternal life. Not eternal death in lake of fire, but I want to give you eternal life in heaven. This is the good news. John 3, 16. Um, the Bible says here, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay. So God so loved the world. Are we in the world? Yes. That means he loves us. He loves you and me. And he gave his only begotten son so that you will not perish. You will not go to hell, but go to heaven. This is very important right here. God the Father gave his only begotten son for you so that you don't go to hell, but you go to heaven. Now, how is that possible? How is it possible for God to give his son and then we can go to heaven? Well, here is the answer to that, okay? Um... I don't have this on the screen, okay? But the Bible says in Romans, okay, Romans, okay, I don't have this on the screen, but I'll, I'll turn for you and read it for you. In Romans 6.23, the Bible says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And uh, so as we think about the scripture, God says, 
Jesus Christ is the gift of God, okay? And he can give you eternal life. Now, how does he do that? How does God the Father give his son through him that we could have eternal life? Well, Jesus Christ died for our sins. Romans 5, 8, okay? This is not in, in the screen, but I'll quote for you. But God commended his love toward us in that while we, while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Okay? And let's go to now Isaiah 53. It's a, this is on the screen if you need that, Isaiah 53. If you have your Bibles, English Bible, you could go there too. Isaiah 53. This is a wonderful scripture. Isaiah 53, verse 5. The Bible says, But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with the stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, and we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. So, Jesus Christ took your sins, not his own, but your sins and my sins, okay, and he placed it on himself, and he died on the cross. Okay? I'm going to have Josiah come up here. Josiah, why don't you come up? Come on. Okay? All right. Thank you. Are you my son? Yes, yes you're my son. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right? I'm going to have Brother Oliver come up real quick. Okay? All right? Okay? Okay? And the Brother Oliver is about to go to jail. Oh, no, all right? He's going to go to prison, okay? And the judge, okay, said, guilty. You have done so many bad things, okay? But you could get out in August and, and get married, amen? All right, but anyways, <laughs> but <laughs> you're guilty, okay? And, uh, and I'm the judge, and I'm judging him. And I said, Oliver, Brother Oliver, you have done so many bad things. You're guilty. I'm going to have to put you in jail. Okay? But here's the thing. I have this relationship with Brother Oliver. Okay? I kind of like him. Okay? And as a brother, okay, in Christ, I love him. All right? And then this is what I do. I love him so much. I said, Brother Oliver, I'm going to give my son to you. And he's going to take your place. Instead of you going to the prison, he's going to go to prison for you because I love you so much. And Brother Oliver is amazed, isn't he? Okay. And Brother Oliver might say, no, 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 don't do that, don't do that. But he said, no, I insist. I'm the judge. I will do this. You have no jurisdiction. I'm going to do this. Okay, you have no choice, but I'm going to do this. I will give my son to you, and he will bear your criminal record and place it on him, and he will go to prison. Okay? That's what God the Father did for you. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right? <laughs> That's what God the Father did for you. Okay? He took your sins and placed it on his own son, Jesus Christ. Because he loved you so much. Let me take your sins of lies. Let me take your pride. Okay, let me take your fornic fornication. Let me take your uh, hatred, your envy, okay? your disobedi disobedience to your parents. Let me take all of your sins, and I will place it on my own son, Jesus Christ. And he'll die so that you don't die and go to hell. And guess what? God the Father was pleased to see that. And Jesus Christ didn't stay in the grave, but he rose again the third day. God says, I will not leave my son in the grave or in hell. I will raise him up on the third day. Because God the Father loves the son, okay? 
right? Okay. And he did that. And as we think about this truth, why will we want to say no and say, I don't want to believe in Jesus? I don't want to believe that he took my sins. I don't want to believe that he rose again the third day. How would God feel when God gave his only son for you so that your sins could be placed on him and that he died? And he wrote and, and to rising on the third day. And for you to say, no, I don't believe you. No, I don't want to receive you. No, I don't want to acknowledge you. I think our God will be hurt. It's very simple. God made it very simple for even a child to understand this truth. God gave his only begotten son so that you don't die and go to hell, so that you could go to heaven. And Jesus Christ can forgive all of your sins. And he will if you just place your faith in him. It's that simple. For the, and I, I think this is on the screen now, Romans 6.23. I'm going through uh, in, in, in order, but Romans 6.23. Thank you. I appreciate it. It says here, for the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay. And uh, it's a gift of God. God says, I want to give you a gift. What is that gift? Eternal life through Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, when someone gives you a gift, do you ever pay for it? Hey, what if I come to you on your birthday, okay? And uh, Miss Midori, you just celebrated a birthday too, huh? And I come to Miss Midori, Miss Midori, here is a birthday gift to you, but it's going to cost you 2,000 yen. Yeah. Now, I'm going to give this present to you, but give me 2,000 yen. Is it a gift? No. It's not a gift. God says, I want to give you a gift of eternal life. God says, I want to give you a gift that you don't have to pay for. And I want to give it to you for free. Now, when you receive a gift, it's free, right? Why is it free? Yes. As a receiver, you, it's, a, it, it's a free, but was it ever paid for? Of course it was, right? Right? Okay. When I give a gift to Miss Midori, a birthday gift, Someone paid for it. My wife did. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and uh, somebody paid for this gift. It didn't just come out of, you know, uh, uh, out of nowhere. Okay? I didn't just create this gift. I'm going to just concentrate and create this gift. No. I had to go to the department store and buy something and give a gift to somebody. Right? The giver always pays. True? If someone gives you a gift, the giver paid for it. And the receiver always gets it for free. So God says, I want to give you a gift. So who's the giver? God. God says, I want to give you a gift. What is that gift? Eternal life through Jesus Christ. Remember? Jesus Christ took your sins, okay? And he was buried and he rose again the third day. And God says, I want to give you this gift, and it's free. And I'm for it. And you as a receiver, you don't have to do anything. You have to believe me. That's it. Isn't that a great deal? That's all you have to do. You just have to believe him. Receive him in your heart as your only savior. As your only savior. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, whosoever, that's anybody in Japan or in America, in Australia, anywhere in Asia or in Africa, Europe, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ wants to why would we say no? What if I give a gift to Miss Midori on her birthday and Miss Midori says, I don't want that gift? Does that, I mean, like, that makes me happy. Does that make me happy? No, right? Okay, if I were to give my wife her flowers for her birthday and she says, I don't like your flowers, <laughs> I reject it, I don't want it. 
take it back. <laughs> but I already paid for it. <laughs> she should just kindly what? Receive it. Okay, that's how you do it, honey. Okay, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> All right. She should just kindly receive it, right? Right? She should. I'm just making fun of her. I'm sorry, but I love my wife. And, she, and every, you know, logical person will receive a gift gladly. And God says to you, I want to give you eternal life. But so many people want to say, no, I don't like that. I want to try to figure out my own way to go to heaven. Don't you know how good I am? Don't you know how perfect I am? Don't you know I've done good things? And look at all these things I've done in my life. You're saying those things will not take me to go to heaven? No. All our, right, right, all our righteousness is as filthy as rags, the Bible says. Okay? Our righteousness, the things that we do good compared to God, it's, it's rags. It's, it's a dirty rag. That's it. That's all it comes out to. And I want to encourage you, if you have never received and believed in Jesus Christ yet, you could believe him today. Okay, it's, it's for you. It's for everybody. And he is the eternal Savior who could give you eternal life. Remember, I can't give you eternal life. The church cannot give you eternal life. Religion cannot give you eternal life. The only person that could give you eternal life is an eternal God who rose again on the third day, and he could give you eternal life. Trust him today. Believe him today. So with that, if you have believed Jesus Christ, your personal Savior already, praise the Lord, and you're a Christian. You're, if you have done that already, I want to encourage you to live for him. Don't live for yourself, live for Jesus. So because he lives, I want to give you three reasons why our lives should be different. Number one, just quickly, for us Christians, our lives are victorious in Christ. Verse 55 in our text, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So by this verse, we know that we should not be fearful of death. So as Christians, we should not be fearful of death. Death is not the end for us, but it's just a transition to eternal life. Our body might die, but our soul and spirit will be with Jesus Christ for all eternity. In 2 Corinthians 5, 8, the Bible says, We're confident, I say, willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And because Jesus Christ rose again from the grave, we know that we will also be with him. And for us to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Okay. We're going to all die one day. Remember fact number two? Number one, we're alive. Fact number two, we're going to die one day. But for us Christians, because we have fact number three, that we're certain of eternal life, we're not scared of fact number two. Okay. Because when we die, we're with Jesus Christ right away. And my father was not a Christian for a long time. But finally, after 10 years, he became a Christian by believing in Jesus Christ. And he lived the Christian life for just one year, okay? And he died because of some disease that he had. He died. And when he died, his soul and spirit left his body. And from that moment, he was with Jesus. And that's the same thing what the Bible is saying here. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. As Christian, we live a victorious life, and we thank God for that. And we look forward to meeting our loved ones. In 1 Thessalonians 4:14, 4, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also would sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. So am I going to see my father one day? Yes. Are you going to see your loved ones who have Jesus believed in Jesus in their hearts? Yes, you will. That's what God promised us. 
we will see them one day. And we should not live in a life of defeat or discouragement or sorrow. Now, we're going to have discouragement. We're going to have some sorrow, okay? But we know that this life is only for a season, okay? Only for a season. We look forward to eternal life. It's like we have four seasons in a year, right? Okay? We had the winter season. It was pretty cold, wasn't it? Okay? But now we're enjoying what? The spring, Okay? Winter season was only for maybe a few months, two or three months, right? Okay. And looking back, it doesn't seem, doesn't seem that cold. Okay? But when the day was cold, it was very cold, wasn't it? Okay. But it doesn't seem that cold when you're looking back because the spring is here. Right? We enjoy the spring. We enjoy the flowers and the cherry blossoms, right? The sakura and everything else. And looking back, the wintertime, ah, it wasn't too bad. We enjoy the spring. Same thing. This life is only for a season. When we get to heaven, oh, it wasn't too bad. Why? Because eternal life is great. Right? We live a victorious life. That's what we need to look forward to. This life is only temporary. So let's live a victorious life. So with that, number two, our lives are vigilant in Christ. Verse 58, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Okay, we live in a different life now because Christ rose again. We live a vigilant life that is busy for the Lord. Philippians 4.13, it says here, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And we should not live a life that is lazy or aimless. We should live with the purpose as Christians. Because Jesus Christ rose again, we serve a living Savior, we have... God that we could serve. And we should not just live a aimless life doing nothing. Okay? We should be going to church. We should be reading our Bibles. We should be going sowing. We should be leading people to Christ. We should be passing out tracts. And we should be encouraging one another in the faith and sharpening each other, encouraging one another. And so we need to live a life that is busy. Remember before you had, you had Jesus Christ, how aimless it was? You were always just looking for the next lustful thing, right? Okay? What's the next trend? What's the next big thing in this world? Okay? And, uh, you know, before I was saved, that's how I lived my life too. Always hanging out with my friends and just thinking about, hey, what's the new thing we get to do? Okay? And, uh, you know, uh, as you grow in age, those things become very vain. I, I hope you understand that. And the world does not give you anything new that's worth living for. Only Jesus Christ is the person that is worth living for. And because he's our Savior, as Christians, we understand that. So why should we live according to the world once again? In 1 Peter 4, 2, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust man but to the will of God. In Ephesians 5 verse 15 through 18, see then ye walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because days are evil. Wherefore be not unwise but understanding what the will of the Lord is and be not drunk with wine wherein is access but be filled with the Spirit. Isn't this very clear that before salvation we we're kind of wasting our time? Okay, and uh, that's why we need to redeem our time now. And by the way, we cannot be filled with the Spirit by having alcohol in our lives. By the way, as Christians, we need to be very sober about this sanctification. Christians should not drink. Okay, they should not drink. Why? Because you cannot be filled with the Spirit of God. And you might be thinking, I could measure and I could make sure I don't go into drunkenness. Well, how do you know? It could be that next sip. It could be that next cup. We need to live a sober, sober life, a very focused life. And we need to make sure that the Spirit of God has a lot of room where he could be filled in every aspect of our lives. In our marriage, our family, we should not have any room for alcohol. I want to encourage you, 
to do not to not let Satan tempt you with this idea that Christians could just socially drink. Okay, it's a dangerous area to go into, and uh, it's more likely that you will not be filled with the Spirit of God. I can't imagine a person who is drinking and going fervently in soul winning. Okay, half drunk trying to pass out tracks. I don't think. That's the case. I have never seen a Christian who is socially drinking get on fire for the Lord. Go soul winning, go to church three times a week, reading their Bibles and memorizing the scripture every day. I have not seen one yet. You know why? Because the scripture says, hey, alcohol and being filled with the Spirit does not mix together. Okay? It's very clear. Okay? So I encourage you to refrain from this temptation. So with that, we need to live a vigilant life, okay? A vigilant life, a focused life, because Jesus Christ is alive. And he is looking at you and me every single day. And we need to recognize that we need to be accountable to him. Number three, I'm done. Our lives are not vain in Christ. Verse 58, for as much as you know that your labor is not vain in the Lord. It's never a waste to live for God. It's never a waste to serve the Lord. It's never a waste to go to church. It's never a waste to read your Bible. It's never a waste to go soul winning. God does remember everything that you do in his name. Let's look at the next scripture, Hebrews 6.10. Okay? For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints, and to minister. Does God remember every work that you do for his name? Yes, he does. Okay. We have some special songs. God remembers all of them. And your heart and the devotions that you have given toward that. Okay. We have a couple pianists who play the piano today. God will remember that. We have a couple ushers who gave bulletins out, set up the, uh, the pews today. God will remember that. Why? Because we serve a living Savior, okay? And he remembers everything that we do and all the things that we do in his name. So let us never forget how much God appreciates your vigilant Christian life. And he loves you and he wants to reward you one day. So make sure you realize that our lives are not in vain in Christ. You know, uh, going soul winning sometimes in Japan could be hard, isn't it? Right? And uh, we're thinking, I wonder if anyone's listening or anyone's reading the track. And I remember uh, this past week just going through all these different apartments. And I think we, I think my, our family passed out in the last two weeks, maybe a good 4,000 tracks, okay? And all the apartments in the neighboring areas. And, uh, you know, you get a little discouraged sometimes because you're not able to speak Japanese that well and you're not able to kind of go out there and you know, confront people with the gospel. And, but, man, Friday came and we went out together. What an encouraging time to see three children get saved. Okay? And I realized it's not in vain. And as we keep working together for the Lord, and, um, and we thank God for that. And let us never forget that God remembers all the toil, all the sweat, all the prayer, and all the effort that you have put into everything that you do in his name. And it does not have to be perfect, by the way. Okay? There are no perfect preachers. There are no perfect singers. There are no perfect you know, church members. Okay? That's why we grow in grace. Amen? And uh, God wants to reward us, even though we're imperfect, as we do all these things. And he gives us those wonderful rewards and acknowledgement by his grace. What a gracious God that we have. And uh, with that, first of all, just want to encourage you, if you have never accepted fact number three, number three, that you could be certain about eternal life. If you have never received and believed in Jesus, guess what? God wants you to believe in him. Why would he not want you to? When he gave his only begotten son, for your sins. Just believe him in your heart today and you will have eternal life. Okay. And then with that, if you're a Christian this afternoon, I want to encourage you to keep living for him. Keep living for him. Okay. It's a victorious life. 
It's a vigilant life. It's a life that's not in vain. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful uh, Easter Sunday that we have. And we thank you so much for those who are here. Uh, I hope the message was clear, understandable. And I hope that everyone in here will leave this room and knowing that they heard the truth. They heard about Jesus Christ and they're encouraged to believe Jesus Christ, their personal Savior, and then also secondly, as Christians, that we need to keep living for Him. And we love you and work in the hearts of these dear people and uh, help us to all be faithful. And thank you so much for NIBC. And thank you for Nishi Michael Baptist Church. Thank you for all that you do through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.